it's said that when we walk into an old church like this one in Clangenin, that the prayer from generations before us can be felt. It's like the echo is still bounced back from the walls and the turrets. I'm not sure what it is that makes a church feel special or spiritual, but this one certainly does. Many priests have stood here and spoken to congregations, led them in prayer, offered up brides and marriage vows, and of course the order of service for funerals, baptisms and weddings. This small ancient church must have seen the footfall of thousands over the years as it served its community. At one point it also acted as a school. Did Griffith Jones himself once teach here? After all, it's only up the road from his own church. In more recent times, this beautiful church has hosted carol concerts, flower festivals and harvest feasts. I'm sure some of you will have been here yourselves. Having been closed for over a year has not stopped the power of prayer. And this church has reopened as the lockdown has lifted and worship in the building has resumed. Jesus tells us we don't need to be gathered in a large building in order to speak to him. Instead, he encouraged people to pray continuously. As Anglicans, our identity is linked to group worship. And of course, Jesus would have done this too, in the temple, but also on the mountains and in the fields. There's not many churches that are more in the fields than this one. Let's hear what Paul said about prayer, kindly read to us by Halloween. The first lesson is from the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here endeth the lesson. We should expect our prayers to be answered. As we desire God to answer our prayers, we show our weakness and vulnerability with humility, and we ask for help. This lesson from Romans tells us that prayer can be difficult, but that we should be encouraged and the Holy Spirit will work for us, translating our prayers perhaps into not what we want, but what we need, what is best for us. Perhaps we don't pray enough and assume that we only need prayers when we need something big and assume that they'll be okay until then. What we see in prayer is God helping us with those big things, but can you imagine how good everything would be? We were also helped with the other things. How strong we'd be, how kind, how generous as a people of God. What we ourselves became a thing of prayer. Let's hear what Luke told us about prayer as he remembered Jesus telling him. Kindly read to us by Heilwin. The second lesson is taken from the Apostle Luke. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us and leads us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose this one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, Finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you 
then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? When the Apostle Peter writes about prayer, he talks about the difficulty of it but how the Spirit will always intervene on our behalf. By this he means that it is us crying out to God that is heard, not what we ask for or what we say. If we pray with faith and a kind heart, we can be assured that we are heard. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. This year is the Diocesan Year of Prayer, a chance for all voices to be raised together, both in private prayer and in group prayer where possible. The Thy Kingdom Come movement asks Christians from all around the world and all denominations to pray together. And there's information on their website and in the LMA newsletter about this. On the list, they have lots of resources and we can borrow their words to help us today. Thy kingdom come, prayer, almighty God. Your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has his breath praise the Lord. Hear our prayer, O God, as we hear your call. If only the world heard your voice as clearly as Paul and recognised its truth and sharply. But as we do, and they have not, grant us the strength to be your voice in this world. So we pray for this world, so much violence, 
and no solution. So much that has been done rightly or wrongly, and a fear and panic that no solution can be found. So for those who find prejudice a way of life, we pray. For those who are trapped and caught up, we pray. For those who have been displaced, we pray. And for those living with and making decisions, we pray. Hear us. For all forms of prejudice, for folk who physically or emotionally build walls, we pray. For those who live with an extreme view of religion, for those who are self-interested, we pray. And for those who live a life beyond what is dehumanizing, we pray. Hear us. For ourselves, for those who are our family and friends, we pray. Those who we know are ill and those recovering. Those who are lonely, anxious, confused, stressed, we pray. And for those who bring colour back to life, we pray. Hear us, so be it. Amen. Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love, and know your friendship each and every day, the breath of Christ the Father. Kingdom come, this is our 